Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is not a progress video. It's not an update video. It's rather just a simple video where I show you guys how to get into the four to one cycle while doing solo raids at Ulm. If you guys would like a complete in-depth guide on raids itself and all the ways to kill Ulm and all the stuff to do at the rooms before Ulm, I would highly recommend checking out Sync Solo Raid Guide. It's one of the most in-depth guides out there. So if you guys are a complete beginner to raids, this video isn't for you. It's really just for the people who want to understand how to get into the 4 to 1 cycle while trying to solo the Great Ulm. I find my way of getting into the 4 to 1 a pretty simple way of getting into it, but like anything, it takes practice. So don't get frustrated. Keep trying and you guys will eventually get it. If I can do it, I definitely believe you can do it as well. But if you guys have any questions on anything regarding, you know, the 4 to 1 or learning solo raids, feel free to ask below in the comment section or come to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash soup since I'm probably streaming and feel free to ask me in the chat as well. I'll just briefly mention before I start that if you guys are wondering what the 4 to 1 cycle is or what it even means, the 4 to 1 means that for every 4 auto attacks you get in on Ulm's left hand, so his melee hand, he gets in one attack on you. And it's currently the best way to do the first two phases, even the first three phases if you're not doing 4 to 0, because you get in the most damage possible while hopefully taking the least amount of damage possible from Ulm. The three most important things to understanding the 4 to 1 are 1, knowing when to attack Ulm, 2, knowing where to run once you've started attacking. Attacking Ulm, and three, understanding Ulm's auto attacks and his specials. This part isn't necessary, but I really, really recommend doing this because it helps a lot with understanding where to run once Ulm has turned his head, and that's turning on the Ground Markers plugin. So go to Runelight or OS Buddy and make sure you have this Ground Markers plugin turned on. And then what happens is once you shift click on a tile, you can then mark the tile and it'll permanently stay marked. So Again, I would highly recommend doing this and having these tiles marked here that I'm about to show you guys. You're going to want to have four different tiles marked, and all of them are on the second row of Ulm, not the first row. They're all on the second row, and again, make sure you guys do this on both sides of the Ulm room. The first tile all the way on the left is going to be two tiles behind that very small light mark on the rock, and that's going to be used not only for helping to set up the mage hand, but also setting up the melee hand as well. The second tile is on the left side of Ulm's neck. The third tile is two tiles behind his thumb on the melee hand, and the fourth tile is two tiles behind his middle finger on the melee hand. Make sure you guys set these up before you go into Ulm because they will greatly help you in preparing to set up the 4 to 1. The tile that we're going to focus the most on when setting up the 4 to 1 is the third tile, so the one that's two tiles behind the thumb on his melee hand. Before you guys set up the 4 to 1 cycle, you have to make sure you're comfortable with understanding when Ulm's head is going to turn and when to run on and off certain tiles. So if you guys are not comfortable with it yet, make sure you guys just practice what I'm doing right now in the background. Simply run back and forth between tiles 1 and 4. If you guys are timing it properly, Ulm is never going to attack you and you're never going to take any damage and you guys can properly set up the cycle. As you guys know, when you're attacking Ulm's mage hand, so his right hand, you are always attacking on the same tick as Ulm. So what you're doing is, as soon as you see him move, you guys want to attack him and you guys will be on the same tick as him, which means that you're going to avoid all damage and he can't attack you. However, when it comes to the melee hand, you're always waiting one tick and then attacking him. So that means that you're always attacking one tick behind Ulm. Some people think that you're always ticking on the same. You always have to wait one tick to attack him. Now, the easiest way to understand when to attack Ulm is simply just to watch for him when he attacks you, and that's when you click. So as soon as you see his head move to that animation of him attacking you, that's when you click on his melee hand, and you will always be one tick after him, which means you can always properly set up the cycle. As you guys can see in the slowdown clip, he does a little jolt animation towards you, and that's the animation you look out for, and that's exactly when you click on the melee hand, because you'll always be one tick after him. That third tile that I was talking about earlier is the most important tile here, because it is always where you want to stand when you finish running the mage hand. So while you guys are running the mage hand and you finish it, prepare to run to that third tile, because it is always where you want to stand to set up the 4 to 1. Okay, so you guys have the mage hand down, you have the tiles marked, you understand when to run to those tiles to turn his head and when to run off those tiles, and now you're ready to try out this 4 to 1. I'm going to show you guys two different ways to properly set up the melee hand for the 4 to 1, and the first one is going to be the beginner method. So you guys remember running back and forth between tiles 1 and 4? This is where you're going to put that to use. After finishing the mage hand, start running back and forth again between tiles 1 and 4. We're actually going to prepare the melee hand starting all the way over at tile 1. So what you guys want to focus on this time is once you make it to tile 1, instead of clicking all the way over to tile 4, you're going to click on his melee hand and get one auto attack in on tile 3, move over to tile 4, and get one more auto attack in. This way you guys can always get two auto attacks in before actually setting up the 4 to 1, and it's a great way to get some early damage in. If you're having trouble with this, 
practice it because you're going to be using it very often. If you're having trouble with the timing on tile three, as soon as you guys see the XP drop on the third tile, immediately click to the fourth tile and attack the hand again. That is exactly when you guys know you can move to the fourth tile. Just wait for that XP drop. As soon as you see it, move to the fourth tile. Now this next way of setting up the melee hand for the four to one really isn't too much harder. It's a bit more difficult, but all you really have to do is pay attention to where you are when you're running the mage hand. So instead of running all the way back to tile one, we're just gonna run it immediately to tiles three and four. So as you guys can see right here, I'm about to finish off the mage hand. His head's gonna turn all the way to the left, which means I can get in one auto, auto attack on tile three, one auto attack in on tile four, and then I run to tile three and prepare to set up the four to one. This can work from pretty much anywhere when you're running the mage hand. All you have to do is make sure you pay attention to which side Ulm's head is turned. Again, if you guys finish the mage hand and his head is turned all the way to the left, looking at tile one, you guys can get in those auto attacks on tiles three and four before running back to tile three to set up the four to one. It's a really nice way to get some early damage in on the claw without taking any damage, and it will significantly speed up your melee hands. After the auto attack on tile four, you guys want to move back to tile three and stand on their marked tile and prepare for Ulm's auto attack. Now here is where you guys want to look out for Ulm's auto attack like I was talking earlier. As soon as you guys see that little animation of him about to attack you, click on the melee hand. After that first auto attack, you're always going to stay there for a second auto attack. So don't move away from that tile. You're always going to stay there for a second one. However, now is when you guys have to look at Ulm to see what he throws your way. There are four different things that can happen right now during your second auto attack. The first possibility is that you're already in the 4 to 1 cycle. The second one is you will be auto attacked twice in quick succession. The third one is there's going to be a crystal burst, lightning, or portal attack. And then the fourth one is that there's going to be a phase unique attack. As you guys know, Ulm has three different phases, the acid phase, flame phase, and the crystal phase. And depending on whatever phase he's in, he can throw out acid your way or a flame wall or falling crystals. The first one we'll focus on is the first one, which is that you're automatically in the four to one cycle. As you guys can see in this clip, I am on tile three preparing for his auto attack. As soon as he attacks me, I click on the melee hand. I get my second auto attack in and right there, he was just staring at me. He wasn't doing anything. If he just stares at you after that auto attack, you guys are already in the four to one cycle. It's called an empty event and it means that you guys already are in the four to one. All you have to do right now is just properly run the melee hand by correctly timing your auto attacks and you're in the four to one cycle already. This is the best case scenario because you don't really have to worry about anything and you're already in the four to one. I'll just show you again here after his first auto attack, if he does nothing, wait for your second auto attack, run to the left of the head, run back to the right while getting an auto attack in on tiles three and four and then just continue the cycle. It's that simple, you're already in the four to one. Again, this will take a bit of practice, but it's the best case scenario. The next possibility is that Ulm will auto attack you twice in quick succession, and you'll know this because he'll immediately attack you again after that first auto attack. There you saw Ulm attack me twice in quick succession with two auto attacks. So again, I was on tile three waiting. There's his first auto attack and right away he throws out a second auto attack. When this happens, you guys wanna run back to the left like normal, but now you wanna do a three to one. So simply put, you guys are doing three auto attacks instead of four on the melee hand. After your third auto attack, you're gonna run back to the left of the head and then you will now be in the four to one cycle. So the biggest thing to look out for is when he does those two auto attacks in quick succession, you guys want to do a three to one and then do your four to one. The next possibility is that a crystal burst, a lightning attack, or a portal attack will come up. Now these can happen on any phase, they are not phase unique. These are just Ulm special attacks that can happen at any time. If Ulm attacks you with a crystal burst, you'll be standing there for three auto attacks. So one, two, three, and then run back to the left and properly run the head. When you guys see that crystal burst, again, three auto attacks on that third tile, run back to the right and you guys will automatically be in the four to one.
Lightning works in the exact same way. As soon as you guys see lightning spawn, you're going to stay for three auto attacks. So there's one auto attack, two auto attacks, one more auto attack, run to the left of the head, run back to the right, and you guys are now in the four to one cycle. Now the tough thing with lightning is that sometimes the lightning will be in the path of your four to one while you're running the head. So you'll have to look out for it. Sometimes you will get hit by the lightning, which can be annoying. But at the end of the day, you just have to work around it, get used to it, and you'll eventually become very, very good at it. But again, with lightning, once you see it spawn, do three auto attacks right after it, and then run the head just like normal. As you can see here, I got lightning again, so I got out of the way of the lightning, did three auto attacks, ran to the left of the head, ran back to the right, and I am now in the four to one. It can be a bit tough at first with lightning because it can be, you know, it can hit you sometimes and it's kind of tough to dodge, dodge at first. But as you guys could see in that clip, you just have to not panic. Look where the lightning isn't going to hit you and then try to properly run right after that. Now, portals can be tricky because portals can pretty much spawn anywhere in the room and they can mess you up if you're trying to set up the melee hand for the four to one. So what you want to do, first of all, is get on top of the portal so you don't take any damage. And then simply run back to tile 1, just like you guys were practicing before. Go back to tile 1, wait for Ulm's head to turn, get in the auto attacks on tiles 3 and 4, run back to tile 3, and then set up the melee hand again in preparation for the 4 to 1. It's the easiest way to avoid any damage from the portals, and it's the fastest way, in my opinion, to just reset up in the easiest way to reset up the 4 to 1 on the melee hand. Finally, we have the fourth possibility, which is that Ulm will shoot out a phase unique attack, so either the Acid, Flame Wall, or Falling Crystals attack. Now, if you guys are on the third phase of Ulm or you're on the flame phase of Ulm, there's a chance for you guys to get the flame wall attack. To avoid this, a really simple thing is just to take a couple steps away from the fourth tile, as you guys can see I'm doing in the clip right now. If it's timed properly, Ulm's flame wall will actually not be able to hit you because we move to the side just in time. What a lot of players do is they'll bring water runes or something that'll let them get out of the flame wall in case they get trapped inside of it. And that's what I recommend that you do if you're just starting out at so doing solo raids is to bring uh, some type of water spell to get you out of the flame wall. But as you guys saw right there, if you run this hand properly while doing the flame phase, there's a chance for you guys to completely skip the flame wall. There are two things you guys can do when you get acid. The first thing is to practice the acid run, which is what I'm doing right now. I personally still can't do it very well. It's tough. It definitely is uh, potentially a lot of damage you can take. However, you stay in the four to one cycle and sometimes staying in the four to one cycle is the best thing you can do when getting an acid run. The second thing is to just really run around the room and try to avoid all damage possible from the acid. And the best thing to do when running around the room to avoid damage is to simply run between tiles one and four or turn Ulm's head so you don't take any more damage from auto attacks or any other special attacks he might throw at you. Finally, we have the falling crystals, which can fall during the crystal phase. Now, the easiest way to avoid these is just to constantly move around. Never be on the same tile for more than one tick. As you guys can see in the background right now, I'm constantly walking on different tiles, and I'm completely avoiding all the damage from the falling crystals because they can never hit me since I'm always moving tiles. So this also takes a bit of practice, but again, by constantly moving and dodging those crystals, you'll always be in the four to one, and you won't take any extra damage. And there you go, guys. Those are the four possibilities that can happen when you guys are setting up the four to one by standing on tile three. The things I want to reiterate the most are that one, you guys are always at least doing two auto attacks when you're setting up the four to one. If you get something like the crystal outburst or something like lightning, you're going to end up doing more auto attacks, but for most of them, you're doing two and then you're running to the left of the head. The second thing is that if you guys are struggling with taking a lot of damage, trying to set up the four to one, the easiest thing to do to reset up the process of setting up the melee hand is just running back to tile one and then running back to tile four. As soon as you guys see Ulm's head turn towards you on tile one, you run back to tile four, you get in that melee auto attack on three, then four, and then you run back to three, just like I told you guys to practice earlier. That is the easiest way to try to reset up the four to one. It is a very quick way of doing it, and it is a lot less stressful than trying to set it up always on the right side. So again, if you guys are struggling, always run back to tile one and then back to the other side. All right, so that's gonna finish off the video on the four to one method at Ulm. I hope I could help you guys with this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, subscribe, drop a comment. If you guys have any questions, also please leave a comment. I will try to answer them below. If it helped you guys, I really hope it did. I tried my best to explain it. Again, I really hope 
uh, you guys can do it. Please stay persistent with this. Solo raids is very, very fun. It took me many months to really understand the 4 to 1 properly, so you don't really get this in a day or two. Some people do, but very, very few people. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of grinding, and you guys will eventually get it. So I hope you guys uh, can stick with it, and I wish you the best on learning the 4 to 1. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one, and peace. Wow.